Hey everybody, it's Jeff Olson again with Milk and Cookies Painting and tonight we're going to paint a cactus, or well, several cactus, cacti, cactuses, cactamundo, these things. <laughs> okay, let's see who's out there. Hello, hello, if you can see me say hello. Let's see if I can get that adjusted properly. All right, is anybody out there in internet land wanting to paint tonight? I have some lovely theme music ready for this evening. Kind of this Aloha Cafe music. It's kind of chill. I'm digging it. Okay, let's see here. Hey, we got somebody. Hello, hello. Can't see who you are, but welcome. We're going to paint cactuses tonight. Cacti. If you're ready, if you're ready, if you're ready, get steady. If you're ready, get steady, let's go. Hey, here's somebody else. Give us a shout out. Let us know you're watching. Oh, here's uh, viewer number three. Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Who are you? Let us know in the comments. Sarah Combs, two girls painting tonight. All right. Welcome, girls. I have some really cool chill music tonight. Age eight and five, very excited. Excited to paint some cacti, cactuses, some of those things. I can't remember how to pronounce any of them. I actually Googled um, the names of some of these cactuses, cacti. I think I'm gonna say cactuses. I don't know. It's one of those weird things, right? Is it cacti or cactuses? Somebody out there who's a English major or, or knows better than I do should correct me. Okay, well, hi Gina. Good to see you. Are you uh, gonna be painting with us tonight? Or just watching the paint show? I have some music to dance to tonight, so that's good. So we can paint and dance and just have a good time. Well, why don't we get painting? Because that's what we're here for. So I'm going to check one thing here real quick. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, for though actually, um, for those of you who are a little more technologically savvy, uh, if you could post a link to this live video on the event or in the comments, um, that would be awesome. Anybody? Anybody? Hello out there. Welcome to Milk and Cookies Painting. I feel like I'm saying welcome to Jurassic Park and you're right in the big doors. But with paint. Right. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure how to work the live thing, live feed, and I'm wondering. If anybody out there has uh, linked this to the page, because I can't figure out how to do that. I need to do that. Okay, so well, let's jump in, I guess. We got painters here, we'll paint. And if people can't join us live, I guess they'll have to watch afterwards and uh, catch up. So first thing we're gonna need, let's go through our supplies real quick. A lovely canvas or something to paint on. Piece of wood, piece of glass, piece of cardboard, piece of paper. Um, 
you can uh, you if you're you've got little tiny kids and you don't want them to have paint because they might make a huge mess that's really part of the fun of it but if uh, if you don't want that you can give them markers or crayons and they could color along and you they could uh, make these cactuses with uh, crayons or something else so um, anyway three brushes a big one a medium one and a small one if you only have one that's okay we'll make two very expensive palette please don't break our very expensive palettes they're hard to replace and they're very dear to us okay then we have well, excuse my big head a small glass of water not for drinking for washing brushes and some paper towels okay so the uh Hey Wes, how's it going? Hey Wes will know how to do this. Wes, if you're on right now, which it looks like you are, would you mind posting a link to this live video on our as a comment uh, on uh, the event? I'm trying to figure out how to do that online and can't really figure it out. Wes will know. Wes always knows. Okay, so um paint paint colors that we are going to be needing tonight are pink now this is kind of a i don't know it's it says pink on it but you know those paint color people are kind of crazy because this is pink and this is pink right and there's a little bit of a difference this one seems a little more orange even though it says pink this one says purple red, right? I don't know why they, well, they're both by Master's Touch. So uh, if you're using another paint color, that's fine. But uh, this is what we're gonna use for our background. I use pink because it helps the uh, cactuses, cacti stand off. Wes, you're a genius, my man. Uh, awesome. So, just wanted to make sure that uh, people could find us. Um, uh, Wes, if you could paste that to the event, that would be awesome. Thank you, buddy. Okay, so we got the pink. We've got some teal, or something close to teal. Aqua green is what ours says. We have some rojo. Well, some red for all of those of you who don't speak Spanish. Uh, this is Artist Loft Red. We like Artist Loft. They're pretty good. Pretty good paint. We've got some purple paint. Uh, this is Creative creative Inspiration. Sorry, my tongue, tongue is a little bit tied there. Um, and we have a little bit of black that we're going to be using. And last but not least... I can't take that one off the board because it will make my board fall and all the other paints. But we're gonna need, we're gonna use some white paint as well for this. Mostly the white paint is for the accents and the highlights on this thing. Wes, I sure appreciate you, man. It's always good to have a good buddy out there watching your back. Okay, first things first, let's get painting. So let's uh, get our big brush and our palette out. And we're going to want to put whatever color pink we found on our palette. Let's give ourselves a nice little glob of paint there. And, of course, just like any other uh, painting video or painting session that we do, we start out by just tapping that brush in the paint. And we're just going to start covering this canvas. First thing first... We're going to go ahead and cover the very top of this canvas. I really like this uh, this pink. It's kind of a like a southwesty sort of pink. It's not the uh, Barbie melt your eyes out sort of pink that you see that's all too common out there. Um, I'm interested to see how all of these turn out. So if you're painting with me tonight, um, please send me a photo send me a photo I can't stress that enough comment on the on the um, 
event with a photo. I would love that. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do after I've kind of gone over the top, I'm going to paint down this side here. Thanks, Wes. Okay. Sorry, sometimes the camera is a little far away for me to be able to see what it's saying. Let's go ahead and get some of this pink on the canvas here. This is kind of a cool little painting. It's a little different than some of the stuff we normally do, but different's good. We've got to express ourselves, and and uh, there is a lot of ways to do that. And there's no, I really like a, a lot of different colors. I guess I probably have a favorite color or two, but um, it's interesting to me that the more I get out of that mindset, the more I kind of um, get into the mindset of of uh, trying just to create something beautiful that I'm using these colors that I don't normally use and that's good it's a uh, it's out of my comfort zone okay after we've got the sides painted down a little bit we're gonna start painting across the canvas with nice long strokes and we are gonna go ahead and paint all the way to the bottom with this pink uh, so if I'm going a little slow you can go ahead and whoop. Get ahead of me a little bit. I hate it when that happens, but it does happen sometimes. All right, here, let's figure this thing out. Sometimes accidents happen and you have to just refocus just a little bit and re-tighten our easel so that we don't have that happen again. Oh no, I've got pink on my hands. It's okay. Most of most of these paints are uh, non-toxic, I hope. All right. So I'm going to fix where my hand hit the canvas up here at the top. Um, for those of you painting along with me, you don't have to drop the canvas. That's not part of it. <laughs> you can, I guess. Your parents probably won't like that very much, or your uh, who, whoever's. Uh, band for the house probably wouldn't like the uh, pink on the carpets. Who knows though? Could be kind of fun. Okay, let's keep on trucking here, guys. Anyway, what I was getting at before is that um, the more I use color, the more my mind is open to using color, which I don't know, it seems a little crazy, but um, you know, I guess it's like anything else. Uh, the more you practice the piano, the easier the piano seems to come. The more you ride a bike, the easier the bike seems to come. Unless you're just terrible at the piano or riding a bike. In which case, uh, take a part. This uh, lovely Hawaiian music today is brought to us by Aloha Cafe. And uh, yeah, it's pretty chill, pretty relaxed. It's a good time. I find that when I'm uh, painting, I like to listen to one of two types of music. I, either something that's really chill, really laid back, just kind of go with the flow, or something that's really jazzy and really kind of gets you pumped and ready to paint. Uh, if you like to listen to music while you paint, what do you like to listen to? Okay. Let's go ahead and paint down the bottom here. Looks like I don't have quite enough paint. Sometimes that's that happens if you're using a lot of paint and it's heavy bodied paint it goes on thick and you have to pour yourself a little bit more. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself just a little bit more of this pink paint. Um, this color is called pink. It's by Master's Touch. I really, really like this color. As I said before, it's, a, it's kind of a 
you know, kind of that Adobe Southwest uh, sort of brick pink. I don't know if there if that's a real thing or not, but that uh, seems like what it is to me. So I'm going to go ahead and continue painting down my canvas. We covered the top and the sides, and now I'm painting all the way down to the bottom. that taken care of. Sorry, I dropped my canvas earlier. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. Hey, Natalie Telemonte. Good to see ya. Let's get this canvas covered in pink. And sometimes at this point, for ease of uh, painting, you can, if you're on an easel like I am, you can take the canvas and flip it upside down so that you're not running into the little posts that hold, uh, hold your painting on to the easel. And then you can paint the top of it. give y'all just another minute or so to catch up and to get your canvases painted before we march on. Nice long strokes and if you end up with a little bit of residual on the sides you take kind of a dry brush so you wipe off some of this extra paint and just ever so carefully up the side and that will get rid of the extra paint. If you've got a nice thick heavy bodied paint like this um, there won't be as much of a residue because it's really thick and it binds really well and so as you spread it across the canvas um, there isn't as much left over when you do when you lift your brush off the side of the canvas. Um, if you have a, a thinner paint uh, you may want to try two coats or just very carefully uh, blend this into the background so that uh, we don't have the little goobers on the side. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and clean out our big brush. Um, if you've just joined us, we have painted this canvas pink and it's very exciting. <laughs> okay. I'm cleaning out my brush now. So, today on the interwebs, I saw, and I'm going to totally ruin this last name because I'm terrible at pronouncing last names, but is it John Kanzinski? Kanzinski? The guy from the office? Anyway, he has started a... Uh, a good news channel and I really like it I think it's awesome we don't hear enough good news we just hear all the bad things that happen around the world and so hats off to him um, and uh, his amazing new channel which talks about all the good things happening around the world seems like uh, time for some good news right okay Uh, if you are unfamiliar with how to clean a brush, all you got to do is dunk the brush once and then wipe all of that off in a paper towel. The reason we don't mash the brush at the bottom and twist it around is because this metal thing on the brush is called a finial. And um, inside the finial, where the bristles of the brush, the little hairs of the brush meet up, um, sometimes if you mash it down, it will split those and break those off and then the brush bristles will come out. So, um, you saw too, Natalie, huh? I, I think that's awesome. Uh, he had Steve Carell on there too. Anyway, um, with the brush, um, in order to keep our brushes nicer longer, all you gotta do is dunk it and then get it off in the brush or in the uh, paper towel. Okay, 
I'm excited to see all of y'all's paintings. All y'all. I just got Southern, I guess. I don't know where that comes from because I'm from Utah. And we don't really use the word y'all. <laughs> okay. Well, now that our brush is, is clean, let's go ahead and check on our canvas. And um, if you look at your canvas, and, and you can see it here, if you kind of tilt it to the side, you can see that when the light hits it, and now I can't get it back, there we go. When the light hits it, you can see which parts of it are still wet by the way it shines. If you've got paint that has metallics in it, uh, you're not going to be able to tell very well. You have to do the uh, the touch test. Um, but uh, pretty much all acrylics, this isn't a hard and fast rule either, um, but pretty much they dry a little bit darker than what you see coming out of the bottle. Uh, so um, if you're painting something that's really dark, you might want to consider going oh, just a shade lighter if you've got some good paints. So when it dries, it'll be just right on the color. Well, let's go ahead and I'm, I'm holding my brush by the back. Sorry, I uh, dropped my canvas earlier and I had to catch it. So now I'm covered in paint. But uh, I'm just holding it with a couple of fingers in the back and gently fanning that to get it to dry just a little bit faster. This is the most exciting part of painting waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> well, um, as always, uh, while we're waiting, I like to talk because I'm a social creature and uh, this social isolation is killing me. Uh, and I appreciate all of you who are watching. Um, I'm thinking about uh, changing platforms at some point so that I can see you and talk to you because this conversation seems a little one-sided. <laughs> uh, and I think my wife thinks I'm a little bit weird down here talking to myself. <laughs> Except I'm not. I have all of you who, might I just say, you're looking very handsome and or beautiful today. Okay. Well, Let's keep on drying. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> You're pretty awesome yourself. Um, and I bet, uh, bet you guys are having fun painting along with me. Are your paintings still wet too? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, so I, I'm uh, I'm doing these painting series um, one because I love to paint and I love to teach people how to paint. Um, but during the COVID outbreak, how can I teach people to paint? Because nobody can come over because everybody's quarantined and under lockdown. So I'm bringing these classes to you absolutely free um, and. Uh, just trying to cheer everybody up and brighten everybody's day. If uh, you like our videos and you want to uh, support us uh, by giving us a tip or a donation, you can do that. I'll uh, post our um, I will post our QR code for our Venmo later. And uh, yeah, Nicole Newman says that is pink. <laughs> uh, so I'm seeing it kind of a little bit coral almost. Uh, you're good, Nicole. If you want to start now, you can catch up to us, uh, or uh, you can uh, watch it later when we repost this uh, all the way through, and then you don't have to wait. But uh, you might as well get painting, right? Because we're all just waiting for the paint to dry. I feel like that's a good catchphrase. We're all just waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> How's my audio, everybody? Can you hear me okay? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us okay. Nobody can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, thanks for joining us, Nicole. And uh, always, always glad to, to have uh, people paint with us. Cool. Cool. That sounded very Californian. I don't know if you're from California or not, or if you'd be offended by that, but I don't know. It just sounded very cool. Cool. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. <sighs> dry. Paint dry. <sighs> I suppose I'm a little impatient. <laughs> okay. So one thing you can do if you'd like, um, if you have a hair dryer handy, you can put the hair dryer or blow dryer, whatever you call it, on the... Uh, uh, canvas and dry it off pretty quick. That little bit of heat uh, and the little bit of moving air does wonders when you are trying to get something to dry pretty quick. And sometimes when we have some uh, like a really thick wet layer and we're trying to paint on top of it, it's almost more difficult uh, when it's not dry to uh, to get that going. Okay, well let's uh, figure out our game plan here. So. Um, now that we've got our coral, or pink, whichever you want to call it, uh, in for our background, uh, we're going to put our saguaro cactuses, spelled with a G, I looked it up. <laughs> we uh, painted some saguaro uh, cactuses uh, the other night when we did our uh, sunset painting, and uh, that was a cool one. I really liked that one. If you haven't had a chance to see that, uh, you can check that out um, on our homepage and you can paint that one too or, or watch that one too. But uh, we painted some cacti, cactuses, I never know. Okay, uh, and this time we're doing the cactus with the detail. So uh, we have our either saguaro cactus or I believe they call them San Juan cactus, cacti that they grow a lot of them kind of close together. The saguaro ones can grow up to like 40 feet tall, which is insane for a cactus. It's insane for one plant, I think. I mean, you see these huge trees, those are pretty cool. But for a cactus, that's pretty impressive, I think. But uh, so these will be our background. This is what we'll do first. We'll do, uh, we'll get some teal on our, cam on our uh, palette and we'll start painting in these background cacti and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to paint in this uh is it called a prickly pear cactus somebody correct me if i'm not right um prickly pear cacti and then um so it's the green one so then we are going to jump down and paint this guy in here, he's purple, and when we paint the uh, uh, prickly pear, we'll paint this one right here on the side, and this guy here in the back, and then the purple one, and then we will paint this red and pink cactus over here, and then all of these like little finger cactuses, cacti, cactamundo, down at the bottom. Does it sound like a good plan? So I forgot when I was announcing my colors that we are going to need a green and I'm just gonna grab that real quick because I don't have one real close so give me just one second and we will continue on with our painting perfect so I happen to have a uh, sap green um, you can use a, a different color green just as long as it's distinct enough from the taller cacti that we have in the background. You, what you do, don't want is for everything to kind of blend together and have the same tone to it. Uh, I think this is a nice painting because there's so many different things going on and because there's different levels in color and, and it looks like in depth too. So first thing we're going to do after our background dries, we're going to go ahead and get some of this teal paint. Uh, mine is aqua, called aqua green. Um, but it's basically teal, right? That looks teal. There's a, a movie, I can't remember which one it is. 
but they say, ah, teal, the color of gangrene. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's a pretty color. <laughs> What's the, uh, there is a, a stone that uh, the Native Americans like to use a lot. That's kind of what that color reminds me of. I can't remember what that stuff is called. Is it turquoise? Yeah, maybe it's just turquoise. Okay, well, let's go ahead and check our painting. We'll do, we can do the touch test to see if it's dry. So you just take a finger and lightly tap and you can tell if paint comes off on your finger, if it's still wet or not. Let's give it just one more minute. Sorry guys, for this to dry before we move on. Looks like my lovely wife, Kara Smith Olson, has joined us. Um, she's been putting the babies to bed. So, yay! We're winning! Um, she's here uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, if I don't end up answering them, um, and you have something that you want to ask, uh, go ahead and type it in, and she'll answer it if, uh, if she can. Perfect! Oh, Nicole's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, we love that, Kara. She's pretty cool. Okay. Well, let's get going. You guys didn't come to check out my cool accents, I'm sure. <laughs> or lack of cool accents. <laughs> lack of cool jokes, that's for sure. Okay. Okay. Well, let's figure this out. So we are not going to have to paint these all the way down to the bottom. Oh, thanks, Nicole. <laughs> so we're gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and change brushes on you. So this is our medium sized brush, if I didn't say that already before. Um, if you're getting a new brush, you wanna go ahead and test and make sure that the bristles are pliable and that there aren't any bits of paint in in the finial or in the bristles so that you don't mix colors. Um, sometimes we don't get our brushes cleaned out well enough from the last painting and it'll put some color on there. So go ahead and make sure those are clean. You can dip it in the water real quick and then tap it off on the paper towel just to make sure that uh, those bristles are nice and pliable. Let's go ahead and snag some of that turquoise. Ooh, I really like this color too. Okay, and the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of fill out where our tallest cactus is gonna be. And I'm gonna come down a little bit from the top. I feel like this pink is a really nice color and I hate to cover everything up. Hey, Justin Henderson, good to see you. Thanks for watching, buddy. Okay, we're painting cactuses here. I'm gonna go ahead and get some on my brush. I'm gonna decide, oh, maybe here is a good spot. And I'm just gonna kind of put a line on there. And then it's gonna to start to curve a little bit. And I'm gonna take the other side of that and start bringing that down. We are going to start adding our cactus in here. And hopefully our paint will cooperate a little bit and not blend too much. If uh, you're finding that as you put the uh, paint on the canvas, it's blending like crazy into the uh, background color, uh, then you might need to wait just a little bit to uh, continue on. So I'm loading up my brush, as I'm talking, I'm loading up my brush with quite a little bit of paint on either side of this brush here. It's got a got kind of a nice, nice chunk of paint. And then I'm just kind of adding this by pulling it straight down. See what I mean by um, kind of mixing into the back? So the more, um, <clears throat> if you've got a, a color and you're painting on top of another color, no matter what it is, if you keep painting and keep brushing on that color, it's gonna start to blend 
towards that color in the back. So if you want a nice vibrant color, uh, number one, you might have to do more than one coat. Number two, um, it might be easier to get a thicker paint as you're painting. So you could start here again and cover up that pink. And we're gonna bring that, oh, we're gonna bring that pretty far down here. I kind of use the side of my brush sometimes to uh, make those side lines just because I have the ability to sharpen that brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of the painting here. And again, that one's gonna come all the way down. So that's picking up a little bit of that paint. So paint is kind of a funny thing. Um, as it dries, it kind of becomes a little bit elastic and it starts attaching itself to whatever is around it. That's why when you, when you touch wet paint, it attaches itself to your hand because it's elastic, right? Um, so uh, as paint dries, it kind of crunches down a little bit and becomes just a little bit elastic elastic hey dad good to see you my dad just joined us we're painting cactuses tonight and we've taken some of this turquoise and we're starting to add our tallest cactus in here just right over top of that pink we're using a little bit more paint than we usually do uh, to get that pink covered up. Once that dries, we'll be able to kind of come in and, and do one more little coat. Hey, Emily Scow, good to see you. Okay, now that we've got that one cactus in there, we're going to repeat this process a couple more times. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides of the canvas here. And I'm going to start my other cactus just a little bit farther down. And it looks like it's a little bit more rounded on the top. It's not quite as flat on the top. Cactuses are pretty interesting things. They, I don't know, to me they all look different, every single one of them. We're going to go ahead and bring that all the way down and add some more of this turquoise teal to our brush. And pull that all the way down. Something satisfying about putting paint to canvas. It's just such a satisfying thing. At least I think so. Cool. Now let's get some of that pink in the middle covered up. If you're just joining us, we've painted our canvas pink and we're adding in these saguaro cactuses uh, in the background or, or maybe these are San Juan cactuses, I'm sure which, but they're the taller variety, whichever one they are. I'm going to add one more uh, little cactus here. Let's widen that one out just a touch. I sure like this music. It's very Hawaiian, this music. I think it's called Aloha Cafe. Okay, 
going to go ahead and paint that down. Whatever we do, we want to make sure our cactus comes all the way down to the point where this one here will cover the bottom of it so that we don't end up in our uh, demonstration one with a little bit of, of pink space over there. That was a little mistake. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue to touch those up. Oops. I had to touch that one even though I really liked how it was turning out. Okay, I feel like maybe this one needs to be just a skosh wider. Okay, and then the last one that we will do on this. Hey, Josh Cook, thanks for watching, buddy. We're going to go ahead and start on the side here. And bring that one all the way down. Okay, now anything that touches the side of the canvas or the corner should wrap around the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and make that wrap the corner and then I'm going to paint down this side right here. And I'll pick that up so you all can see it a little bit. So here I started here and as you can see I wrapped the corner and painted all the way down the side. Now let's get rid of that pink there in the middle. Let's paint over that. And then we can start with some of these other little cactuses in here. You can paint up and down on these. I wouldn't necessarily paint side to side just because um, cactuses have these nice long thin ridges. And if you go side to side, you kind of might ruin the effect of, uh, uh, of it being a cactus. Just a thought. Okay. Well, I'm pretty happy with those cacti in there. There's a few little tiny cactuses back in here that are kind of that same color. So I'm going to go ahead and add those real quick. I'm going to switch sides on you. And so there's a cactus right here. Kind of looks like a finger. And maybe there's a, another one that's right there. You know what? Maybe they stem off of one of these bigger cactuses down here. I'm going to tidy up this line on the side here. I feel like that line is a little bit rough. So I'd like to just, there, feeling better about that. I'm going to add some more paint to my brush here and so I can get rid of all of this pink. Cool. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and uh, clean off our brush just for the moment. We'll come back and we'll give um, these another coat of that uh, this teal. But we want to let them dry because if you mess with it, just like I just barely did, what will happen is you'll get these little lines of paint that uh, your wet paint, because the paint underneath it is drying, as you're putting it on, it'll actually take the paint off of the canvas because it's elastic like I was talking about before. So if that's happening you either need to wait and let it dry or to add much more paint to it. Okay so let's go ahead and clean off our brushes here. Hey Dan Morse good to see you. Welcome welcome we're drawing cactuses. 
Alrighty. Well, we've got our brush pretty well cleaned out. How's everybody doing out there in painting world? Am I moving too fast or am I doing okay? Let me know in the comments so I can... I'm going to keep going at this pace. Oh, sure. So, um, thanks Wes for that. For a starter kit, that's an interesting uh, question. So we have a starter kit uh, that we sell that comes with a set of 24 paint colors. Um, it's got an easel. It has, uh, I think it's seven canvases. It's got a nice professional palette with it. And uh, it's got an apron and some brushes. And we sell those for a hundred bucks. If you're interested, let us know. And we can get that to you. We're also selling um, canvases uh, for two bucks a piece for the uh, 11 by 14 canvas. So if you guys are close and you need a canvas and you want some some that are good, um, come on by and we'll figure out a time to socially distance get those to you. Um, in the art world, there aren't very many uh, kind of comprehensive art kits. Um, and when they, when you do get a kind of a comprehensive art kit, it comes with colored pencils and crayons and um, and markers and you know sometimes it'll come with paint but um, I don't know some of those kits are good some of them are bad uh, some of the paint in them is is pretty cheap um, or you only get like this much of it <laughs> which is a little frustrating uh, I am located in Sandy Utah for those of you watching um, so if that uh, helps your decision um, but uh, you can buy all of the supplies for this from Hobby Lobby or from Michaels or from um, there's some of these things at Joann's. Um, acrylic paint is pretty easy to find. You can either buy um, one of the known brands like um, Artist Loft, that's a Michaels brand. Uh, you can buy, you can also buy. Um, Hold on a second, I'm almost losing my paints here. You can also buy this Craft Smart. Uh, that's a little bit of a cheaper paint, but because I use so much white and so much black, a lot of times I'll just buy the Craft Smart because I'm mixing it into stuff half of the time anyway. Uh, and then um, this kind of paint, this Creative Inspirations, is really nice. I really like their brand. You can get them from Jerry's Artorama. I'll try and uh, add a link to that at the end of the video. Um, then there are several other brands of paint. Um, we got Master's Touch here. We have uh, the Liquitex Basics. You can find those in many of the, the craft stores. And actually a lot of hardware, hardware stores are starting to stock uh, acrylic paint. Uh, house paint and, and some of those kinds of paints are not all too different uh, than the acrylic paint that we're using. Um, a lot of the heavier bodied paints just have a, a little bit of um, additive of some kind, a little bit of a thicker thickener or binder to them. Uh, good question, Wes. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions or you want to check out our, our artwork, um, feel free. Uh, we have a lot of our example paintings posted on Facebook in our albums uh, and we would love once this corona madness is over for you guys to come and paint with us again. Um, we love to have people here in the studio and um, yeah anything you need or if you have any questions let us know and we'll try and get you supplies or any information that we have. Okay well now my paint should be dry because I've been talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, I think our next uh, paint color is going to be green. So if you want to uh, load up your palette with a little bit of this green, I'm using sap green if you've got some of that around. Or if not, if you have uh, just a nice uh, forest green, that will work. We're painting uh, prickly pear cactuses at this point. And so they, they kind of have that very 
distinct green color. Oh, pardon my paint, guys. That was my paint, I promise. <laughs> Disturbing, I know. Okay, so um, now that my brush is pretty clean, it's still a little uh, teal looking, but it's clean. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that green, both sides of my brush. And uh, these prickly pear cactuses, they have a very distinct shape to them. Um, I think I'm going to start with the one down here because I feel like this paint is drying a little faster on this side. Uh, we could really start anywhere with this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start, oh, I'm going to say right about here. Just kind of... It's smearing that paint, but we will try our best to make these look like prickly pear leaves. So I'm kind of making almost a kind of a roundish sort of fruit shape or a leaf shape. And they, um, they kind of stick off of each other like little sails on a sailboat almost. And you can if you want, you can add another, another little protrusion here. You don't always have to paint paintings the same every time. And this is your painting, so if you want to paint it just a little different, that's cool. I'm okay with that. You do you. Okay, so I'm going to tighten up that line at the bottom. And some of these might seem just a little bit sloppy. We're kind of painting them pretty quickly. Um, if you're at home, you can take your time a little bit uh, and rewatch segments or, or just wait for the paint to dry. I'm going to go ahead and make that one come all the way down. And then I'm just going to kind of paint it in. because I think that our purple cactus, this big round one here, is going to overlap and come all the way up there here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and paint on the side a little, another one of those kind of protrusions coming off this cactus. In fact, just to kind of for safety in case I don't I end up making that purple cactus go all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and just paint the rest of that down to the corner there green so that we don't ever end up with pink canvas showing through there. Okay, that one's feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm liking the look of it. I might just widen that out just a little bit. You know, they say that painting is an internal argument that you have with yourself. And if, uh, if you painted with me before, you've heard me say this a thousand times, that uh, one side of the argument is, have I done enough? And the other side of the argument is, I just have done too much. So uh, we'll let you figure out what's enough and what's too much. Well, I tighten up that line here and then I'm going to make this leaf just a hair bigger. There. I guess that doesn't matter too much because that's going to get covered up a little bit with our purple. But that's okay. We'll paint it anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and sharpen up our brush and add some more green to our brush. We're going to go ahead and add these cactuses, or these, uh, they're all cactuses. <laughs> There's other prickly pears on this other side. So pretty high up here is where I have um, this first prickly pear leaf landing. And it's pretty big. And this paint is pretty wet. 
Yep. So we're either going to have to go more paint or we're going to have to just let this dry a little bit. I'm going to add just a little more paint and see if I can soldier through that. Sometimes people paint really, really thick paintings, especially the oil painters, the old masters used to use really thick paint. Some people really like that. Um, if you're a texture person and you can see the, the paint texture on there, that's pretty cool. Acrylic paint, for the most part, will dry fairly flat. Uh, there are cases, though, where you'll paint a line and it'll be super thick, and when it dries, you'll see just a little bit of an edge or a little bit of a bump. But it, it's... Uh, a little more rare that that happens, I've, I've found. Okay, made one leaf here, and I'm gonna make another one. That one's gonna be a little bigger than the first, but they have to be connected. And don't hold your breath while you're painting or you'll pass out. It's not good to pass out while painting. Just let you know that now. Okay, I'm liking the shape of that one. Let's go ahead and bring one right in here going to kind of overlap that little leaf just a little bit. Oh, I need a little more paint. I'm picking up that paint all the way down to the pink there. Hey Nancy Montoya, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. We're painting cactuses, cacti. Gosh, I'm going to get that wrong every time, aren't I? Cacti. Can you eat cactus? I'm pretty sure you can. Just not the spiny bits. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little more green to my brush. Just to make sure getting that paint on thick enough that I'm not pulling too much paint off of the canvas. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and bring one more leaf over here. I don't know if you can call those leaves. They're, uh, they're kind of crazy. I'm going to also bring one more that connects on the side there. So you got to have a base somewhere for that cactus to come from, right? And you know, I, the more I'm looking at this, the more I think that these ones on the edge need to be tidied up. So I'm going to do that now. And that's going to come all the way around the corner. And then I'm going to add one more little uh, petal or leaf uh, that is kind of coming off here. And it's going to curve around and off the edge. But this one we got to be careful with so that it comes right back to this little part of our cactus here. So it all ties together. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. Went off, sorry about that guys. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead 
and we're going to take a break from green for a second. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe that out. And we'll wait for everybody to catch up. Is everybody having a fun time tonight? Give us a thumbs up if you're having fun. Or scream at the television or computer screen. Just kidding, I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> you're not talking loud enough, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, yeah, let's clean out our brush here. And that green is a pretty strong pigment, that sap green. So it's taken a minute to uh, get this thing tidied up here. I think for our next step, we're going to be using purple. So if you've got your purple handy, let's go ahead and get that out now. And we'll add that to our palette here. Okay. As I said before, I'm a, a living, walking commercial for creative inspirations. It's good paint. You should try it. And uh, go ahead and give myself a little purple paint. Uh, let's do a little more. Pardon my paint again. Okay, now that I've got my brush clean and it's pretty dry, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my reference image and decide what I'm going to do. I think I am going to add one big purple circle to here while I kind of wait for some of this green to dry just a little bit. And uh, this turquoise is still not quite dry, so we might have to be super careful as we move forward here. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my brush with quite a bit of uh, this uh, purple. And I'm going to start, oh, what do you think? Well, let's start right about there. And it's going to come all the way down. So when you paint to the side with your brush, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a jaggedy edge there. We can go back in and touch that up here in a minute. I just kind of am, am sketching with the brush, right? Let's see, let's go ahead and bring that purple down. This purple cactus is going to live in front of this uh, other cactus here. And start to uh, add some paint. Tighten up this circle just a little bit. Okay. Let's touch up this edge. Nice and tight edge. Good. I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and paint that in now. And as I said before, if you don't want it to mix in, you're going to go ahead and uh, kind of paint it on and then move on to the next spot. Maybe grab some more paint and then keep on going. Because if you keep going over the same spot, it's going to blend together those colors. What I absolutely love about acrylic paint is that if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can always fix stuff with acrylic. You might have to wait a few minutes for it to dry and then to move on. Um, but acrylic is a very, very forgiving medium. Um, people kind of look at paint sometimes and they go, oh man, that, that if I do the wrong stroke or anything, it might just totally ruin it. No, it it's okay if you do something that you don't like you can just again wait for it to dry and, and then continue on i got a little teal mixed in on the top of my uh, cactus here 
That's okay, I kind of like it. Happy little accidents, right? Okay, I'm pretty pleased with how that's working. I'm going to go ahead now and grab a little bit more of this purple. And I'm going to, first of all, come down to meet this one. We're going to kind of paint over most of this, but I want to be able to see this purple behind the red. Also, let's go ahead and flip our canvas over now, if you haven't already, and let's paint the bottom. Because if we don't, we're going to forget it, and then it will look silly when we're done. So let's go ahead and take some of that purple paint. And all the way from that little one, we can paint that in purple. Now, if you have an easel uh, that has a a flat edge on it um, you might want to leave it to dry for a minute before you put it back or uh, it might stick to the canvas so you got to be a little careful with that and I'm bringing mine all the way to the corner here just so that it's nice and covered There. Okay, let's go ahead now and we can dry this for just a minute. We've got a lot of wet paint on here. If your paint is super thick, uh, but it's kind of runny, be very careful as you're fanning it because you could make your painting weep, right? Your painting might be so sad it might weep. Um, but sometimes if you have thick color, it will, as you fan it, uh, if you fan it too vigorously, it'll make the paint start to slide off the canvas. It's not dry. So let's take just a minute here to uh, dry our paintings. Do, 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 do. Dancing with the painting. <laughs> I need to to look up a bunch of good jokes uh, so that when uh, we're waiting for the paint to dry, I have something to tell you. <laughs> My daughter today, um, we went to her school to go and get her a Chromebook so that she could study online uh, as all of us are learning how to do. And uh, you know, one of her little friends was there and I'm like, Come on, stay away from, I know you want to go play with your friend, but you know, we got to stay away from each other. Um, but of course, as you know, six-year-olds don't listen. And um, I had to go in the school and get the Chromebook. And I, before I went in, the person in front of me went in and uh, I had to wait for a second there. And I heard my, I overheard my daughter telling this awesome joke. So she leans over to her friend and she says, what did one chicken say to the other chicken? And her friend said, I don't know, what? And she goes, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> And if you know my daughter, uh, she just really delivered it well. And I, I, at first I thought, oh, that's kind of dumb, but all jokes are kind of dumb. And, and the more I thought about it, the funnier and funnier it got to me. Um, so, I don't know. Those kids have some good jokes. Hey, Kurt Lifson, thanks for watching. We're painting cactuses today. This is how far we are so far. Here's the uh, the finished one. But we're just trying to uh, dry our paintings. Thanks for the laugh, Josh. I hope you guys all enjoyed my uh, daughter Addie's joke. She thinks she's a uh, funny. She is pretty funny. It. Uh, it's uh, such a unique and different experience to be working from home. Um, yeah, my, even though my wife does 150% of the work and she's awesome. She takes care of our kiddos and she helps us all get fed and all get uh, taken care of. And, and uh, 
we're doing great over here. I, and I hope you guys are all doing great out there, wherever you are. And as you're watching this, um, you know, do something nice for somebody today. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> anyway, um, be kind to everybody that you come in contact with. And, and uh, yeah, let's make the world a better place today. Better than it was yesterday, because yesterday was crappy. No, just kidding. <laughs> yesterday was good, um, but let's make today a good day. All right. My paint is impossibly wet these these days. It's uh, it's not drying super quick. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on. For those of you who do have uh, paintings that are dry. I don't want to hold anybody up. So our next um, layer, we're going to go ahead and add some more of these purple circles. I forget which kind of cactus this is. I looked and I thought I knew, but I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to load our brush up with purple paint again. And we're going to very carefully add in a few of these I'm gonna make that one a little bit rounder I guess we're covering up part of what we just did that's okay sometimes you end up doing that I know uh, one of my favorite painters, Bob Ross, used to uh, paint this beautiful background scene. And then he'd come in and cover it all up with about six trees. <laughs> it used to drive me so crazy. Um, but uh, there's something about painting something like this that you just, you still know that it's there. And sometimes you can see behind it and see that something else is going on there. Okay, so I've got a nice little round cactus shape here, and I'm gonna add a little one up here. It's a little smaller than that last one. There. And then we'll add one more little one off to the side. Cactuses are kind of funky and they kind of grow a little bit crazy sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little tiny one off to the side there. If you want to do Mickey ears on yours, you can, I suppose. You can add one more little one here. It's our, our hidden Mickey. Uh, and don't tell Disney, or they'll sue me. <laughs> Violet prick prickly pear, Optunia macrocentra. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more that uh, appendage coming off of this cactus, and this one's gonna be a little bit on the taller side. It's still gonna be kind of rounded. And that paint still is wet. So we're gonna have to be careful as we do this. Because otherwise we're gonna get a whole different color here. Okay, I wouldn't lot I think I wanna try and make the bottom and sides of this just a little rounder. Something nice about this nice round shape we got going on. There, I'm liking that a little better. Maybe this clumps a little closer to the bottom as well. Good. Okay, now I'm going to make one more little appendage off of that one. more 
more paint to my brush just in case I break through to that pink. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more of those down here. I'm gonna start oh, right about here. Sometimes when cactuses grow together, you can't really see the, uh, the space in between them. Sometimes you can. There's our next one. We're going to go ahead and outline these here at the very end so they kind of make them pop a little bit. Uh, and we'll outline with black when we do it. So it will uh, cover up quite a bit of this. But they don't have to be completely perfectly round. I mean these cactuses all kind of have their own little personalities and sometimes they're not round. Sometimes they're just a little bit of a wonky shape there. And let's do one more. This one will be just a little smaller. And a little bit more of a crazy shape. And I'm feeling like I need to make this one over here just a little bigger. I feel like he's going to touch down. Here I go again with that, I've got it perfect, or have I just done too much sort of vibe? Okay, good. I'm uh, relatively pleased with how that, uh, that purple is fitting in there. Now I think it's time for us to do a little bit of red. So I'm going to go ahead and wash out our purple from this. And as always, if you're not happy with it, you can go back through and touch those up uh, and do any color you uh, go back to any color that you want as we're painting along. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of red to our palette here. Sometimes these squeeze bottles are really reliable and sometimes they go and shoot paint across the room. So you got to watch those pump jars of paint. I like them because uh, for classes and things it's easy to distribute the paint but uh, for use it's a little bit harder. Now this is a little bit of of a different, a little thinner mix of paint. So you might have to go, well, if you've got a thinner paint, you might have to go a little he heavier on the paint. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my red cactus come and overlap my other cactuses, cacti. I'm always misusing that term, huh? That's okay. Okay. a very red cactus. So as you can see, you can still kind of see the purple beneath this red as I'm putting it on here, and you can still see the green as well. This might take another coat, but also when we add the white, which we will do here in a second, uh, to our paint, it will um, take care of that issue. You won't be able to see uh, the paint behind it. It's kind of a cool little trick. Okay, let's get some more red on our brush and let's paint that in. I'm 
got to be careful. I don't want to dump my canvas again. <laughs> it happens. So as with these other ones, I'm trying to, as much as I can, paint in an up and down direction, just simply because that's kind of the way they grow and uh, they look a little nicer if they're they're up and down. Okay, also I'm going to go ahead and paint over the side here. Let's make sure that our red goes all the way to the corner and if you have a, a dome and then it kind of goes over to the side what you can do is you can adjust the width of your cactus and make it a little wider so that it looks more like it goes all the way off the canvas and then adjust the side to make it work. Okay we've got that red in here it's looking nice I'm pretty happy 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 with it. Okay let's uh Go ahead and flip our canvas over again and make sure that we are painting that bottom section red very carefully so we don't drop it. Now it's on the opposite corner up here. And we're just trying to get that all, all covered in. Maybe it's a little wider. We could go a little wider on it. It's always interesting to take a look at something from a different angle because when you're looking at it the same way all the time, sometimes you get too used to it and you go, oh, it's good, it's good. And then when you turn it a different angle, you go, oh, I wish I would have painted just a little bit further, farther on here. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and take some paint and I am going to Paint that just a little wider here. Okay, and then of course we have to match on the bottom what we've done on the top. Alrighty. Well, let's take a, a quick minute to dry our painting again. Uh, let's give you a close-up view of it so you can see. Hopefully yours is looking a lot like mine. And uh, when this dries, it will dry a little bit darker, of course. We've still got a few details to put in here. Um, but we're, we're getting somewhere. You can kind of tell they're cactuses. You can uh, kind of uh, get those nice vibrant colors in there. And uh, yeah, let's get these things dry. Sorry, I wish there were a fast forward button so you could just and it would be dry on my end of things. But you may need a minute or two to finish painting the, that red in there or maybe you're still on the purple. Keep it up, keep, keep painting and uh, we'll uh, let this dry for just a second. So as many of you know, uh, I went on a, a LDS mission about, oh my goodness, it's been like 15, 16 years now ago, and uh, I went to New Zealand speaking Tongan, and I love the ocean and I love, um, Tongans are awesome. If there's any Tongans out there, malo tau lava, and uh, if not, that's okay too. You don't have to be a Tongan to paint. <laughs> um, but I also like the desert a lot, which is good because I'm from Utah. So it's awesome. It works out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want to, when all of this is over, if you want to book a, a class, we teach mommy and me classes. We teach um, date night classes. Uh, we do 
uh, we teach uh, youth groups, uh, we do birthday parties. So if you're wanting to have us come, uh, go ahead and send us a message through Messenger on Facebook and we can book your uh, part of your spot. But sounds like uh, not till May with all of the craziness that's going on. Okay. Oh, uh, we also have uh, a private class going on. Um, it's going to be on Wednesday nights. And uh, we posted a post to a, uh, Facebook today about it. But it's $129. And we're going to be painting some pretty awesome stuff. I'm going to put this down for one second. And I'm going to show you some of the paintings that we're going to be painting in that class. Uh, they're a little more... Uh, on the technical side, uh, but we're going to be doing that through Zoom, so I should be able to see your painting and see if I can help you along the way throughout some of the issues that we're having. So give me one second. Okay. So one of the paintings that we're going to be painting is this painting here. We call this our Monet Bridge painting, and it's based loosely off of uh, Claude Monet's uh, garden bridge that he painted all the time. This is our version of it. We also, in that class, we're going to do six paintings. So that's one of six. The, we're going to be painting Hogwarts Starry Night for all of you Harry Potter fans out there and for all of you Starry Night fans out there. So that's painting number two of six. I'm going to grab these other two here. Okay, we also are going to be painting this lovely flamingo on there. I think it's a pretty nice little painting, and uh, yeah, it's a fun one to paint. Okay, so there's our flamingo. It's painting number three in the session. And then this one is a fan favorite. People love to paint our sloth painting. <laughs> And we think he's pretty cute, too. Um, so if you're interested... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so the other two paintings in the series are going to... One's going to be Delicate Arch, which we haven't painted here before. Uh, and the other painting is going to be of the Oregon coast. It's the one that we had originally posted for this coming Wednesday night, um, but we decided to add it to our Wednesday night class uh, schedule and if you want to paint those cool paintings uh, let us know and we can uh, sign you up and uh, we can get going on those okay but the rest of the paintings that I'm going to be doing um, each weeknight sans Wednesday are going to be absolutely free and uh, if you want to donate or give us a tip uh, you can do that through Venmo we would greatly appreciate it okay Let's get painting again. Hopefully we've had some time to catch up and our paintings have had just a minute or so to dry. Mine's still pretty wet. How we doing out there, painters? Are our paintings getting dry? Are we struggling? Are we all caught up and waiting for me to get going on this? Give us a shout out and let us know how we're doing. Painting cactuses. I don't know this song. I just thought I'd make one up. <laughs> well, I hope you're having fun. And I hope that our paint, your paint is drying faster than mine. This paint is being kind of a bear. Tonight, especially, I don't know why. Okay, well, we're going to keep going. Because I haven't heard contrary to that. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, thanks, Nicole. Um, we'll try and slow down just a little bit, um, but if you are, um, 
for those who are trying to catch up. But for those who are, are doing good and we're ready for next steps, uh, what we're going to do next is I'm going to have you, um, let's see here. Our red is really wet and our purple is really kind of wet too on mine. Uh, I was going to suggest that we start doing these little finger finger cactuses. I think they call them finger cactuses. They look like, like aloe vera almost, like they have little spikes and stuff. I guess all of the cactuses have, well, most of the cactuses have spikes and stuff on them. But these ones look just like little fingers or little spikes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I still have red in my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and clean out my brush in anticipation of putting that green back in my brush. So I want to clean it out pretty good. And that red also is a pretty strong pigment. quick clean of the brush and we'll be on our way. Cool. Alrighty, we're jumping back over to the same color, that same green that we were using before. But this time we're going to put it down kind of in spiky shapes across the bottom of our painting. Let's see here. Sorry guys, I'm just adjusting that a little bit. Is that a little better? There was kind of a shadow on there before. Maybe I'm casting a shadow here. So I'm going to uh, come over to this other side so you guys can see a little better. And I'm going to turn my handles down there so that I can put these um, finger shapes in. I'm going to go ahead and grab some paint here pretty thick since I can see that my painting's not dry yet. And I'm going to start all right about the middle or so of this purple circular shape. And then I'm just going to lightly touch down and pull down. And that's going to kind of start my shape. Then I'm going to go back and grab some more green. And kind of trace the edge a little bit and then just round out that side. That's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I'm a little surprised that that took as well as it did. There. Kind of came in and touched up that other side there. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or so times. Um, these can be different lengths, um, but they kind of need to look a little bit like shark teeth. So you're going to press down. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of that purple paint on there. Come back in and get a little bit thicker on the green. Lightly touch down and pull that all the way down to the edge of the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and round this out now on the one side, or on the inner side, I should say. Now I'm going to do one that kind of comes the other direction. I'm going to starts to kind of Head the other direction. We might need a little more green here in just a minute. I'm starting to run out here. I'm going to make this next one just a little smaller. We'll grab a little more green, of course. And then I'm going to sharpen my brush with that green in it because there was a lot of green on that one side. So it doesn't conform, it's a little taller 
That's okay. And let's put one more on this left hand side. Let's make it just a little shorter like this other guy. And we'll start maybe here. It's a little thicker, but it's a little shorter. Sometimes you pick up a lot of that purple paint and you have to go kind of go back and clean off your brush a little. And go back in with a little bit of green. Okay. That's looking pretty good for those. Let's go ahead and add some to our red. Hopefully the red won't just come all the way off here. I'm gonna start up a little higher here. Drop one in, oh look, that's exactly what it's doing. That's really wet, that red. So we might need a lot of that green paint. Cover up that red. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more green paint to my palette and let's let this dry for just one more minute here. I'm almost out of sap, sap green, it sounds like. Okay, I, have, I ended up with enough that I think I can finish this off here pretty well. Okay, let's, I'm going to kneel down just a second so that I can let you see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and curve this out just a little bit so it doesn't look funny. It's kind of got a funny shape to it. Yeah, let me show you what I'm doing, but then get my hand in the way so you can't see, all right? There. Okay. Looks like there was a little purple on the bottom of that one. I'm going to add about three more of these, just very carefully. Oh, using a lot more paint. It's hard when you ha are painting wet on wet because when you touch it, you get that paint color underneath. Yeah, and I don't think that's quite ready to paint on top of just yet. All right, well, yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do instead while we're waiting for that. Let's go ahead and grab um, a little bit of black and we will put that on our palette while we're waiting. And then we're going to get our little brush and we're going to start painting in some of the details or some of the uh, lines on our cacti in the back. So. I'm going to add a little black to my east or to my palette here. It might get added to my easel. Just give me a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take my small pointed brush. Uh, I like to use a number two pointed brush quite often. This happens to be a number four pointed brush. Um, but if you have a nice a brush with a, a nice small brush with a fine point on it, I think will be in pretty good shape. I'm going to lay my uh, wet green brush aside uh, for a minute and give this a chance to dry and then we'll go back in and touch up those areas. Sometimes uh, when it's too wet to paint, it's just too wet to paint. But we have lots of details and things that we can do while we're waiting for the rest of this to dry. So. 
I'm going to go ahead and take some of this black in my pointed brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is choke up on the brush so I'm way, my fingers are way up at the top. And I'm going to, if my painting's wet, I don't want to lean on it, but if my painting's dry, I can kind of lean a, a finger on it maybe. And what we can do is we can start painting those outlines, especially on the background. It's still a little wet too. Man, our paint is not drying well tonight. I suppose I ought to turn on this heater just to try and get it to dry a little quicker. That's going on okay. Be very careful with your little brush with black in it. It's a very delicate delicate line here. We don't want to go too crazy with the black. I suppose the the black and white lines make them look just a little cartoony. But I think they're going to look good. Each time you run out of black, you start just a little earlier than you did. You overlap just a little bit. there on the outline of this one here. There. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and get his buddies outlined. So if you want to sharpen a pointed brush and get a nice fine point on it, you can take and just kind of drag it through the paint and I'm just ever so slightly twisting it as I do that so you get a nice fine point on it. So you're trying to get it nice and pointy, that's the best way to do it. now just doing the outlines and you can if you'd like as you're painting these outlines um, if you slightly twist the brush just just a little bit as you're painting up um, it will help the paint to go just a little further And as I say that, the paint runs out on my brush. Okay. I'm going to come in and do the top of this now. I always like to watch the uh, the old sign painters and they just very meticulously put those nice sharp edges and I think to myself man I wish I didn't shake so much <laughs> as I uh, as I painted because 
I would love to do that. That would be amazing. Okay. Let's see here. Why don't we start here? Well, no, let's get this other one done. I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit out of the way. Just going to move it back so you can still see it. Maybe, if I'm not standing too close in front of it. And remember to make that black span the corner and go around the side. Then we can start on some of these others and we're going to go ahead and just trace pretty much everything on here with the black. So we're going around up a little green there. I'm going to go ahead and go around this purple. By the time I'm done with this one, it is going to look like Mickey Mouse. Okay. This was a little more complex of a painting tonight. Um, I mean, you look at it and you go, wow, that looks fairly easy. And it is easy, I think, but it's just lots and lots of lines and lots of details. those two lines. Sorry, I just ruined Mickey, I guess. Go ahead and connect that line. And let's start here. Just very delicately, all these little lines get filled in. I'm going to add some more paint here. It looks like I'm taking some off. Okay, that's looking great. 
Let's continue on. Need a little more black paint for this line here. Hopefully these paintings are making you happy and not making you frustrated. Painting makes me happy. Helps me relax. It's very therapeutic. Maybe the green there is a little too wet. Let's continue on, shall we, over here? Switch sides here. Sorry, I hope I'm not making you dizzy by switching sides too much. And some of those angles are a little hard to get to, aren't they? try and finish this up here in not too long. I know that there's some kiddos painting along with us and we want to uh, get them finished so that they can be off to bed. It is a school night after all. You know, I'm not sure I know what that means anymore. <laughs> Sometimes as I'm painting, I kind of get lost in the painting. Just a little more paint. Now 
let's try and trace in these little guys over here. So this black is really nice because it gets rid of our jagged edges. It kind of almost gives it a like a comic book feel and we're just kind of tracing around everything. That's looking pretty good. Oh, still have a couple of little spots here. Some of my lines are getting a little thick. I think that's just because my hands get a little tired. Pull a little of that red off. Just going to kind of wipe that off on my palette and grab a little more of the black on here. Boy, that uh, red sure is uncooperative, isn't it? Okay, well, we did the best we could on those. So we'll wait for just a couple more minutes to, for that to dry, but let's go ahead and add these little detailed marks in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the middle of the canvas, or middle of the cactus, and just kind of draw or paint some lines down in there. Let's go ahead and touch that up a little bit. That was a little messy. And we'll do another one in here. Kind of straight down the middle. do one that comes out and around. I'm excited to see how these are going to turn out guys. Wondering how they're coming together. If you need to touch any of the outside lines up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do the same and split this cactus into parts. Okay, so that one's going to come straight down pretty much the corner.
if I can draw a straight line, that would help. Or paint a straight line, that would help. Hey, Stephanie Hart, thanks for joining us. Okay, we've got one more little line here on the corner. Kind of on the back side a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and split this other cactus with a couple lines here. Straight as we can. There, that one was an easier one. have to be totally perfectly straight. I mean life and and cactuses for that matter aren't always perfectly straight. Okay, I'm going to split this one here. side there and one more down the middle just for good measure cool well I feel like this is coming together pretty well Let's go ahead and add some of our little spines to our prickly pear. I'm just going to take and add a couple of little spines here. Just putting like little pairs of three lines in here and they kind of look like little pokies. So if uh, this cactus needs to have its lines that come all the way through it, so let's go ahead and figure out where those are going to be. And then there's one down the middle here. Okay. Uh, then let's add a couple more little spinies. And also to this one over here. And maybe one more out here. Those things sure are spiny things. across the bottom needs a couple too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch sides over here. Oh, it looks like I need to finish my red line on this, uh, or my black line on the red cactus. And then it needs a couple little spines on the corner or the right side. Doesn't look too crazy. Maybe it needs one right there. Those ones are a little bit messier, but they're a little more fun. Okay. Well, I think we're going to try and attempt. Uh, let's get this colored in. Let's 
try and trace around this green. It might still be just a little too wet, but we're going to try it. We might have to go back for black just a little more often than we normally would. That's okay. Grab some more black on my brush. Okay, we're getting those outlined better than I thought we were going to. The paint is just so wet tonight. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take some of this black and we're going to split our cactus down with a few lines. If it's falling the paint off, you need a little more paint on your brush. trace that leaf well, I've got it in there okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and um, trace a line down like this and then I'm gonna paint those in green here in just a second and then this one will come down kind of like a J and then I'm gonna Go ahead and clean out my black out of my brush. It's time for a little more green. And we are getting pretty close here, folks. So I'm going to get a little green on there. And just so y'all can, can see still, I'm going to go ahead and Carefully put that in and then I'm going to get a nice big glob of green and try and fix that spot there. Great. That worked better than I thought it was going to. Okay. Okay, now last thing before we sign these, let's go ahead and flip this over and let's paint the bottom pretty much green. See how that's all of those come down and they I'm gonna flip that over on its top. And I'm just gonna paint most of this space in green. There's a few spots that should remain purple. Let me go back for some more green paint. Let's finish her off strong. Well, 
awesome. This has been a fun little painting. I hope you guys have enjoyed painting it with me. Our very last step. Uh, uh, and you can let this dry and then take the black around the corners. But since it's so wet, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and sign that for this evening. I'm going to grab my little brush, make sure it's cleaned out. And I have a little bit of white paint here. I think that'll be a good contrast. Uh, typically I sign my paintings in the bottom right hand corner. But since we just barely, barely uh, put that on here, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little white paint on my palette here, wherever there is a little spot that I can find. And then, let's see here, let's show you that. So I've got a little white paint. I just put it over the dried out pink paint. I'm using that same little brush and um, you can initial these, you can sign them. I typically sign right here in the bottom right. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. So I have, well, that's way, way wet. <laughs> we'll wait to sign it until it's absolutely dry. But uh, thank you all for painting with me this evening. I hope you guys have had an awesome time, and I hope that you will all join me for tomorrow's painting. Um, and that you'll tell your friends and family. Um, if you would like, I will leave a, um, a QR code so you can donate uh, to Milk and Cookies Painting. Um, and from us to you, have a, have a great evening and happy painting.